Hey there, everyone. How are you? So I had so much fun yesterday kind of creating a, uh, a presentation about uh, Josh Dorkin and Brandon Turner interviewing me a second time from Bigger Pockets that I kind of brainstormed what would happen if Grant Cardone and Elena Cardone uh, sat down to give me an interview. First off, let's be frank, never expect that to happen. Um, you know, they're big time. You know, I'm some small guy just trying to help. Uh, I don't ever see this happening. Also, I would expect if this interview happened, it would be pretty um, stressful for me, I guess I would say, uh, because obviously if you followed Grant Cardone for any length of time and myself, you will know that we really have different views, right? He is, uh, I don't know, bigger is better. You know, let's go pool capital, do syndications, um, you know, I'm smarter than you are. Give me your money. And I'm like, you know, no, one rental at a time works. You know, control your own destiny, conservative finance, learn your market. Uh, so uh, I, I went ahead and did it. I went ahead and created a presentation. I, um, I made it uncomfortable because I would expect Grant Cardone to be nothing less than on attack mode. Uh, so we do have his questions being as such. Uh, I did pepper in a couple of questions from Elena, uh, which are um, basically easier and more comfortable to answer and really where we could have a conversation. Uh, so without further ado, uh, I thought I would share with you how I would expect a Grant and Elena Cardone interview to go if they wanted to interview me about one rental at a time. And as always, I created a PowerPoint so you could see the questions instead of um, just going along. So let's get all this set up and here we go. All right, so again, if, you know, if Elena and Grant uh, ever wanted to interview me, you know, that would be a dream. Uh, this hasn't, hasn't, will likely will not happen. Nobody's reached out to anybody. It's just not gonna happen, let's be real. But it's fun to think about. So um, here we go. Uh, so again, it's fun to think about, you know, what kind of questions they would be. Uh, I've watched both of them both together and individually. So I tried to take my interpretation of their persona, their questions to, to make them fair. Uh, I would, I don't expect this interview to be comfortable. Uh, Grant doesn't know how to hold anything back. So he would be on attack mode. Uh, and each of his questions are um, intended to put me on my back foot which I would expect nothing less from, from him. Uh, so that's, um, you know, I, I did my best. And again, I have 10 questions here. It's just kind of a nice round number. I'd love to hear what you think the question should be, right? A lot of you follow Grant. A lot of you see his content. So what do you think he would ask me? Uh, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, leave the questions below. So without further ado, let's jump into it. So first question Grant would ask me uh, in some form would be, you know, hey, you know, Michael or one rental at a time, why do you think so small, right? So again, if you followed Grant, he often tells this story about the first house, investment house he ever bought, and then he goes on to buy units from there and, you know, bigger is better and all of that. And really what I would tell him is, you know, hey, Grant, you know, first off, thank you for the opportunity to speak with you. You know, you're a legend this, in this business and, uh, you know, to spend a half an hour with you and Elena is, uh, is something I will never forget. So thank you for that opportunity. But as for thinking small, I guess, you know, if you simply think about unit counts and if that's your kind of measuring stick, sure, one rental at a time uh, is small. Uh, but again, what, you know, what, I, what my goal is, and I think your goal, at least in the beginning, was to make a meaningful impact in the financial future of as many people as we can. Uh, you have taken that to the next level. You have eight books and six companies and fly around in a private jet. And your story has gone to a level where, you know, you have to talk bigger is better, right? Because people probably are throwing money at you. And the only way you can even attempt to use it is uh, to buy bigger things. So I get it, right? I know where you're coming from. But let's go back to why we're doing this. Uh, at least why I'm doing this is I'm trying to make the you know, the financial future of the individuals watching my channel, uh, reading my book better. And I fundamentally believe, maybe not like you, uh, that if you buy one, two, three, four single family homes over the next decade, 
and you conservatively finance them fixed rate debt you know you buy them where they're where they're ready to go right turnkey or thereabouts given where financing is that you can have a better financial future i believe the people that are willing to be a part of your syndications and yes i know you're doing non-accredited investors now congratulations but be careful um is a small number I know why you're doing it, as I said, I get it, right? The math says you have to. Uh, but I'm here to, to tell people that, you know what, if they can take control of, of, of and create a better financial future for their family with just one rental house, there's nothing wrong with that. You don't have to be big like Grant Cardone. There's only one Grant Cardone. There's only one Grant and Elena Cardone. You're not going to be them, right? Stop it. Uh, however, if you go get one rental house, you will have a better financial future. So I don't consider it thinking small. Uh, I'm trying to help the most people. Um, my hope is in the next decade or so, the one rental at a time story helps more people get their first rental home uh, than maybe contribute to your syndications. And I know that's blasphemy, uh, but I believe there's a lot more people that'll buy one rental house than will put in a hundred grand to a, a syndication. So um, I guess you can say I'm thinking small, uh, but I'm really not because I want to help more people than you. All right. So Grant didn't like that answer, right? Because he would be in attack mode now for sure because I basically called his baby ugly. Uh, but now what he's going to say is, why don't you step up and go after 100 units in today's market? Well, Grant, that's an interesting question. So, you know, you like to tell your story about the last crash crushing you and you running off and writing a book and all of that. Well, I've been investing since 2003. Uh, I saw the market rise. I saw what I now call the herd mentality. Back then, the herd mentality was in single family homes. Everybody and their brother was flipping homes or even flipping contracts, right? What I mean by that is people were buying a vacant lot that builders were building on. And that contract from groundbreaking to final completion was sold at least three times with everybody making 20 grand. That's what I mean by the herd mentality. And that blew up and that crushed a lot of people. And it sounds like it hurt you as well. But what I'm telling you now is the herd is somewhere else. And I think you get 100% of the credit or the blame, however you choose to look at this. I can't tell you how many people come up to me asking me this same question in different flavors. Maybe for them, it's 10 units. Maybe for them, it's 50 units. Maybe it's a thousand units. I don't know. But frankly, bigger is not better today. I've owned them now, in fairness, I've owned nothing close to what you've owned, but I've owned multifamily properties. And people are overpaying. People are following your strategy of bigger is better and assuming it's always true. It's not. The herd is raising prices. I believe if you were honest with yourself, Grant, that you are overpaying today. But you have to, right? You have money sitting there that you have to deploy. And I think you are sitting in a position where you get the absolute best interest rates. You have non-recourse debt, right? Everything is in your favor and yet you're overpaying. And then if you think about the people below you, these new syndicators that you have helped spark with this interest of bigger is better, they're overpaying and they're going to lose limited partners money. I believe in today's market, you are going to be celebrated for helping people get bigger is better and all these Facebook and Instagram and YouTube videos of people getting the first apartments. You are 100% behind that. I believe in three to five years, those people are going to lose those properties or at least lose the equity that they've been given. And what once was the credit, I think you're going to get the blame. I think people are going to lose money because running apartment buildings that are overpaid is a non, is just not a good idea. They're hard. It, you're making it look too easy, right? You're flying around on your corporate jet, getting out and you know showing up in your roles or whatever it is, and you're making it sound so easy because you're just talking about Excel. It's not that easy, you know. Once the unemployment goes up and you start having you know 50% of the units turn or go late or whatever, and it happens, most people aren't going to have the reserves and be able to hold on. You'll, you probably will because you probably have deep pockets all over the place. But there's going to be a lot of people that lose their butt. And um, I frankly don't want any part of it. Uh, I have sold 
uh, many, if not all my apartments because people like you are overpaying and I'm happy to do it. Uh, I believe single family homes are a much better investment today. And if you follow my story, Grant, for any length of time, you'll know that for the most of my career, bigger was better. You would just make more money. It's frankly how we retired because bigger is better. But today in a market of limited supply and a seemingly endless amount of money, the prices are just too darn high and I don't want to overpay. I don't want to go broke. That's why uh, I'm not chasing these bigger numbers, Grant. So Elena steps in. She tries to help me be less crushed by Grant. Uh, and she, uh, you know, she's pretty big on, um, you know, being a part, right? She talk, talks, talks about the empire and queen and all of that. So I imagine she would ask me a question such as this. You've been investing side by side with your wife since day one or from day one. Uh, what does she do? Well, thank you, Elena, and I really appreciate what you're doing to, um, you know, spawn the discussions of financial independence and working with your significant other and all those things. And uh, I feel for you having to, to uh, you know, work with this uh, this crazy grant all the time. I'm, I'm bet you have some very interesting stories that you can't share and probably shouldn't share, uh, but that's that's pretty cool. But as as for my wife, my, uh, you know, she's been the rock uh, of this this investment. If you followed our story at all, uh, you will know that our first investment house does not turn out well. Uh, we move in a tenant, we do everything right, but life happens. They get divorced, wife takes off, uh, and we end up eating about $20,000 in expenses and never getting rent and having an eviction day one. And again, we chose a market we don't live in, so we don't know anybody, and it's just horrible. But she's the one that says, nope, right? Law of averages, let's keep going. Let's get the next one and the next one. And again, that house eventually turns around and is a wild success for us. And the next one's a great success and so on. Um, in addition to that, as the market turned during the collapse, uh, she was the kind of the break, right? Because I wanted to jump in and buy everything that came across our desk. And there were just some properties that weren't worth it. And uh, she did a great job of using her veto power and saying, nope, we're not going after that one. So. Um, you know, she's, she's been in since day one. She's, uh, you know, we, we wouldn't be here today without her. Frankly, I'd still be working if she wasn't a part of this. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm very thankful every day. And I do believe that you need to work with your significant other. You can't have real estate become a thorn or a reason for a fight because bad stuff does happen. However, the good stuff far outweighs the bad. Um, but again, um, you know, I applaud you for what you're doing, Elena. And, uh, you know, uh, I really think Olivia deserves all the credit in the world for what we've been able to do. All right. You know, Grant, he's going to come back in. He's going to be mean now because he's kind of upset. Uh, he's going to say, stop being a coward. Go raise some money and buy some big stuff. Okay, Grant. Well, first off, you're absolutely right. Private money, working with friends and family is a key part of um, growth. And you probably don't know this, but I have used private money multiple times in our career, um, consistently raising over seven figures. Uh, however, uh, I don't believe in complicating my life. Uh, I have no interest in being anywhere close to you and your success and all your multiple companies and all those things. I don't want my life to be that, uh, I guess I'll just say complicated. And uh, I don't choose to syndicate because I don't like to pool capital. Uh, anytime I have chosen to raise money because the deals are there, uh, I have one private investor in one asset. I don't want to pick favorites. I don't want to do anything that, that causes my reputation to be in question. Um, you know, it's just, um, just too important to me. Uh, and, you know, uh, as for the bigger stuff, Grant, I think I've sort of kicked that. I think the bigger stuff's overpriced. And not only would I not risk my money, but man, I could, you know how hard, you know, it would be, it'd be rough for me to lose my money, but it would absolutely kill me uh, to lose the money of a friend and family member. So if I think the stuff's overpriced, I'm not going to go get a hundred percent leverage and use some friend and family and just be like, Oh, sorry, lost your money. Uh, that's not who I am. Uh, and again, I put all my stuff on blast so people can really see what I'm thinking. And my math says today that multifamily bigger units are overpriced and you get a much better investment in single family homes. So first off, uh, you can call it, you can call me a coward all you want. Names don't hurt. Uh, I think I'm being rather smart or strategic. 
Um, I am fully willing to raise money when it makes sense, uh, but I am never going to lose somebody else's money, and I certainly don't want to lose mine either. Uh, so I'm not buying bigger stuff. You you can you can be as mean or nasty as you want, uh, but you're not gonna you're not gonna bully me uh, into thinking uh, into thinking I'm wrong at least uh, at least today. So again, Elena, of course, would jump back in because that was probably very uncomfortable for me. Uh, so she's going to ask uh, a question, something like this. So, so you're doing all of this, right? You and your wife, why don't you have employees? Elena, that's a good question. Well, first, the first answer, if you don't know our story is we built most of our portfolio while being full-time employees, right? We had a, we had a day job. I think a lot of people that follow you, Elena and Grant have day jobs and, um, they don't have time to have a second job with employees and matrixed organizations and multiple, you know, VPs and directors and managers and employees. Um, and, you know, it's kind of back to grants, one of grants earlier questions uh, where we are in our lives is we don't want complications. We don't want to make anything more complex. We are fully willing to help as many people as we can when time permits. Um, but we don't see adding scale with employees being a, a key to that. So, um, you know, those, those are those, that's why. And, um, you know, I, I, I do toy with the idea, right. Of, you know, Hey, why don't we go get some employees and, and really see what we can do here? I think that's a slippery slope, right? You get some employees, then you get more then you're in multiple markets. And pretty soon, you know, I'm working a lot more than I want to, right. In today's world, I might work 10, 12 hours a week. And to call it work is a joke because I love what I do. So to me, it's not work. It's fun. It's helping, um, you know, seeing a, seeing somebody buy, buy my book one rental at a time on Amazon and leave a five-star review just makes me so excited. And seeing, seeing an investor go to Fresno and make an offer is really, really exciting. So, um, you know, having a private Facebook group just for my students where they're sharing their homework and talking about deals, really, really fun. Uh, so that's what I want. Um, I think if I had employees, I, my life would be more stressful. Um, and frankly, I'm, I don't want any part of that. So that's, that's why no employees, but fair question. I think about it every now and again, you know, Grant's going to come back in. He's going to be really, he's, he's probably really stressed. You can really see his face probably getting red at this point. He's going to say something like, you're not big time. Why are you here? Basically, why am I wasting his time? Well, Grant, first, um, you know, somebody, uh, somebody out there had the, you know, wherewithal to put us together. Uh, you know, our messages are seemingly very different, right? Your bigger is better. You think my one rental at a time is small and not interesting. And of course you're saying I'm not big time, which is, you know, everybody's, you know, you're right. You have a right to have your opinion. But I think what people are seeing is uh, if we really sort of step back and just go, Hey, how can we help people have a better financial future? I think our stories are kind of yin and yang, right? There are some people out there that want to give their money in control to someone else. Those folks are going to come to you and Cardone Capital, right? They're going to look for your quarterly reports. They're going to watch you flying around and they're going to feel great about you investing their money. There's another part of the population that never would do that. And what they want to do is understand how to build self-confidence, how to learn a market, how to take the best educated decision on their part. And those people are going to follow me. I'm willing to guess that there's, you know, out of a pool of 100, 65 or 70 of those people are going to want to control their own destiny and make their own decisions. Now, I could be absolutely wrong. And maybe I have the, I'm suffering from some kind of biases. Uh, but, um, you know, the others are going to go your direction. No question. So I think what people see is, um, you know, two successful people, one clearly more successful than the other. And that's obviously you, Grant. So there's no question. You're more big time than I am. So congratulations. You know, you should feel good about that. Um, but, you know, I think over the next decade or two decades, I'm going to help. I'm hoping to help more people than you, honestly. And I know that's blasphemy. And when you have a million followers or whatever you have. Um, but I think the one real time story is going to slowly build. People are going to see it as the uh, connection to Rich Dad, Poor Dad and how to get started. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm hoping to sell, I'm hoping a million people buy the book and, and do all these things, you know, over the next decade or so. Uh, and I want to help, I want to help more people than you. Um, so we'll see what happens. So Elena would jump back in. 
um, she's going to probably ask something like, why did you choose one market and never leave? Uh, well, Elena, first, um, the first reason we chose one market is, again, that's to back to one of your earlier questions, is we had full-time jobs. And I believe learning a market is hard. I believe building a team is hard. Um, we had very limited capital in the beginning, right? We don't have endless capital. Uh, so, so we chose to focus. Uh, we did play with the idea of looking in other markets in 2007, uh, but realized that uh, the scale and scope and risks that we would create by doing that would be foolish. Uh, we had no interest in, in saying we're in five markets or six cities or you know any of that stuff. It's, it's an ego thing. Um, I believe if you focus on one market, you can, you can really dominate and, and, and do some great things. Um, I saw no reason to have a second market to get to the goals. Our market was big enough. We could, we could get to where we wanted to be. We don't want to be the biggest. We don't, we, we just want to be comfortable and, and, you know, sort of finish up this life that we're all given. So that's kind of why we did it. Um, you know, I guess we're risk averse. We didn't want to, we didn't want to tip over the apple cart and, and go somewhere else. So Grant will come in, uh, probably still testy and say, okay, fine, you wanna be in one market, uh, why don't you own the most units in there? He would probably say something like, you've been there 15 years, you should be the biggest, right? If I was in a, he would probably go on to say, if he was in a market for 15 years, he'd own all the inventory and he'd be the biggest, baddest, blah, blah, blah. And he's probably true. Um, you know, so again, Grant, you know, thanks. Um, again, as I've said a couple of times, we have no interest in being the biggest and the baddest uh, in any area. We want to provide safe and secure housing. We want to help people change their financial future by showing how we did it. Um, we got to a point where we were comfortable and covered and that was enough for us. Um, you know, I would tell you having over a hundred units is, uh, is not easy. You're, you're dealing with stuff all the time. I don't know how you do it with tens of thousands of units. Um, you know, we're, we still spend a couple hours a week dealing with evictions and approving expenses and turnovers and all of that. Um, so again, we don't want to be the biggest uh, out there. It, um, when you're the biggest at that point and you have everything else we've talked about today, Grant and Elena, no employees, we're not raising millions of dollars and, you know, pooling capital. Um, again, we're, we're okay. And maybe that's thinking small. Maybe being comfortable is being lazy or small or selfish or whatever. Uh, I don't see it that way, uh, but I certainly can appreciate how you might tell me that. And, um, you know, that's kind of the answer. Uh, so Elena would come back in. Um, so she would probably ask me a really nice question because this interview would be tailing off. And what do you want people to know about the one rental at a time story? Well, Elena, thank you for that. Uh, this interview, even though it's been a little testy with Grant, has been a lot of fun. Um, I'm honored to, uh, you know, be with you for you two for half an hour or whatever it's been. Uh, I will always remember this as a pleasant experience because, again, I think we're all of us are looking to help people. So, as far as the one rental at a time story, I would tell you I want um, I want everybody to know that financial freedom is hard. However, having a better financial free financial future is easy. And again, let me say that again, Elena. Right, financial freedom is hard, but a better financial future is easy. And it's that that I want people to know. I think people can have a better financial future just having one, two, three, four rental homes. And I know your husband would say I'm being small and all of that, but again, there are lots of people out there that would never think about contributing to a syndication or being a limited partner. And I think those people need a better, better choice. So I want to tell them about the one rental at a time story, right? The book. Uh, I want them to get it on Amazon. I want them to see they can have a better future. I want them to have confidence in themselves. And if they don't want to be a part of the syndication and they just want to go get a rental house, I think we should encourage that. So uh, I want people to know the one rental at a time story is, um, is an okay message. And you don't always have to do bigger is better, especially in a market that I think is overpriced. So Grant would come in, he'd be really, really tense with me. You'll never be big time like us by thinking small, step up, right? And he would probably have some other choice words in there. And again, I'd say, Grant, you know, again, nobody can argue with your success. You're, you're, you're one of a kind. You're all these great things, right? Um, but I don't want to be you. And as hard as that is for you to hear, I don't want to be you. Uh, I don't have any interest in 
and that. And if that makes me small or weak or a coward, as you called me earlier, fine. You call me whatever you want. Um, I'm going to try to help as many people have a better financial future as possible to Elena's question. And um, I think that is stepping up. My goals are simply different than yours. And uh, that's okay. You know, I believe there's a lot out there. And, um, you know, I think, I think, I think I am, I think I am stepping up and, but I appreciate where you're coming from and why you would say that. So in the end, if you're still watching this, hopefully you had some fun. Uh, those questions were, you know, pretty testy at some points. If you're still watching, do me a favor, please subscribe, leave a like, leave a question, right? If you watch that and you think they'd ask me a different question, leave a question below. And if I get enough of those, I'll create another video. Um, so if you leave me some comments with some questions that they would ask, again, I'll create another video because that was kind of fun for me. So let me know what you think. Have a great day. Take care.